have been waiting for all morning but before then so there's an awareness uh, awareness campaign going on on gh1 tv i'm sure that you've seen it and it's about covid 19 and how it's transmitted well the virus is transmitted through direct contact with respiratory droplets from an infected person and by touching surfaces that are contaminated and that's why we keep telling you to keep yourself and your family safe by practicing good hygiene, which includes washing your hands thoroughly with soap and running water. And of course, I will recommend the Life Boy soap for you. It's an antibacterial soap and it's the best to use in these times. Right. Uh, so I have with me here Nana Kwame Bediako. He's the CEO of so many things, uh, so, so many things, but I leave that to him to tell us all of that. It's good to see you. Welcome. Thank you. And the interview is streaming live. So all of the questions that people have been sending me privately, please send it there. I'll ask them, um, them for you. But once again, welcome to the show. Thank welcome you. to GH Today. Thank you. So I know you as Cheddar. I know you, of course, also as Nana Kwame Bidiaku. I've heard so many things about you, but tell us, who is Nana Kwame Bidiaku? Well, so there's Nana Kwame Bidiaku, there's Freedom Jacob Caesar, and there's Cheddar Cheese. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, stuff from Cheddar Cheese is just, you know... We'll, we'll come back to those names. Now, let's, let's... Who are you as a person? People know you for your flamboyant lifestyle. We'll talk about all of that, but... Beyond what we know, who are you? Well, Nana Kwame Bidiaku. <laughs> just, um, just a young Ghanaian that grew up with a um, religious background. My mother is more spiritual, and I grew up going to church every Sunday, which I still do. Mm. And um, I've always been very ambitious and a visionary. But growing up, I realized I can also play a part in economist, being an economist and an industrialist. So these are the things I'm working on. And um, I'm a humanitarian. Right. You, you, you are known as one of the biggest business moguls we have in this country. How did it all start for you? I didn't know until you're saying it now as one of the biggest, but uh, yeah, thank you for that. Um, I've always, I've always loved doing business you know some sort of um you know uh creation um inventing stuff you know um doing things my own way but making sure that quality is always present and um i learned about corporations establishment and you know how to do things right from the younger age so that's just something that you know, I think I've always been following that. That's what has brought me this far. You know, I learned to do things right. Just... But how did you get here as a businessman? Yes, of course, you're determined. You've always been ambitious. What was your first business and how did it go? It was a poultry farm. I was very young. I bought a hen and a cock and um, started laying eggs because I wanted eggs. And they became chickens and they became a poultry farm. And then? And my mom sold the chickens and eggs to pay my fees and to help me and my other brother to leave. So, you know, and I did it not thinking of the business. Um, I think it's more to do with the passion behind what we do in life. I'm very passionate about what I do. I, and I would advise every young person out there that, you know, passion, it's basically the happiness and the foundation of everything that we want to do in life. Um, People would think that sometimes you need to be successful to see happiness, but it should be the other way around. You should let happiness lead you to success. And that happiness is always based on the passion you have in doing things. Okay. I, I still want you know, us to dwell a bit on the things that you do, uh, the businesses that you own. Take us through it. Walk us through it. So the building of um, you know, Qualis, the famous Qualis. Everybody knows Qualis at least. When did it start? How did the vision come to mind and all of the other landmarks that you own? And for those who don't know, we'll be showing visuals of some of the, the properties that he owns in this um, country. How did they start? I mean, quality started by just, you know, the fact that I always wanted to honor my mom. Uh, and I wanted to do it while she's alive. So um, growing up, I 
didn't know I was going to build a big building and put my mom's face on it and, you know, sort of mortalize her on the building and, 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 and honor her. So it started, that, that's how the vision started. I wanted to introduce a home that has a functional space, but also smart, smartness, which will be in competition with hotels and um, uh, uh, Airbnb. And so Qualys was the first building I started with, and um, it's my mom's name. Okay, so that's, which one is this? I don't know. Um, this is, uh, <laughs> there are too many, huh? This is Belgravia. Okay. This is Belgravia, is um, eight townhouses. This is something that I did on just two plots. Um, so maximization is the first principle of our business. Uh, how do you maximize the use of two plots? So we put eight houses, and it's one of the biggest maximization I did. This is Qualys, actually. Uh, it's also 40 apartments on two plots, and... Uh, it sits on, uh, yeah, it sits on half an acre, but it has the penthouses, the two bedrooms, the sky bars, the roof gardens, and restaurants, and so forth. Mm. Just like a hotel, but we're more like private residents. Okay. Okay. Now, let's, let's, let's talk a bit about your lifestyle. You're very flamboyant, and I see pictures of you. I'm sure lots of people do as well. And quite outspoken, especially in a country where people, you know, seem to crawl back a little. How, how do you do that? How do you get so comfortable in being so flamboyant and so outspoken? Well, I mean, that's just maybe who I am. I'm humble, but I'm also flamboyant. And sometimes people want to force people to become what they think they should be. But we are only ourselves. You know, you can only be you. And mm. the best of you can only come out of you being your best. And so I'm sorry if people kind of find it offensive, but it's just who you are, who I am. And um, I'm up front. You know, I speak my mind. I feel like, you know, we should emancipate ourselves from mental slavery by holding our mouth when we're supposed to speak. You know, it's good to hold your mouth and hold your tongue. But when you're supposed to speak and show your boldness, it's very important that we do so also. And I think sometimes my confidence and my faith is mistaken for something else, which um, it's fine. But I'm, I'm okay. about it. Um, like I said already, I'm sorry if, you know, my lifestyle, it's offensive to people. But it's, there's not much I can do. You know, I feel like... There is a generation that also understand where I'm coming from and believe in what I do, what I wear, what I say, you know, and um, I wish them to become better than me. But I feel like we're Africans and we should be very bold about, you know, our fashion sense, our culture, how we want to be like, how we want to live like. Okay. Now, apart from your official name, Nana Kwame Bidiaku, we're saying earlier, I know you as Cheddar Cheese and... Now you've added a new one, freedom. What's, what's the motivation first behind Cheddar and now freedom? Well, Cheddar sim just simply meant money. When I was growing up, when I was 16 years old, you know, that was like my street campaign that I started with. You know, I've always believed in, you know, sort of building some kind of image brand, you know, and not only in the form of business, but also within society. So... Uh, Cheddar was just the awareness of money, and I, I wanted to be able to tell a lot of people that, you know, life is not just about chasing the money, but it's about also finding a way to leave it. You know, like I say, I was just saying to Pa, don't tell your dreams, leave your dreams, you know. So Cheddar was just like, you know, sending the signals out there and um, building some sort of reputation with the younger generation, you know. I think it kind of blended in there. Very well. But then, you know, after some time, I needed to exit Cheddar. And Freedom Jacob Caesar is just the new me, basically. It's another sort of character that has come out after 10, 12 years of Cheddar, Cheddar, Cheddar. And, okay, um, so Freedom Jacob Caesar. Yeah. Tell You're, us about that name. Well, first Why of all, that? I mean, I mean, Freedom, it's um, my movement behind the New Africa Foundation. Right, yeah. And, um, you know, I thought that the next biggest thing that I want to be after being Cheddar, which is money, is freedom. You know, because that's one thing that I didn't see in my um, lifestyle of living and, and portraying money. I felt that freedom was so important that even if you had money and you didn't have the freedom, you didn't have any use for it. But I also wanted um, Africans to have uh, uh, this way of 
you know, freeing themselves from a lot of issues that they have staying on on top of them, you know. And, and so I started branding freedom. Jacob is more like, you know, uh, unity, you know, talking about different countries or falling under one belief and one culture and, you know, that sort of the 12th tribe of Judah kind of thing. And um, Caesar is more like kingdomship. <laughs> So I believed in that. These three things, you know, sort of br brought this new character in me out. And I, I, I know it's quite controversial and it's not something that, you know, people would probably understand me now. But I believe the younger ones also do understand where we're coming from. Okay. Flowing from that name, Freedom, has started the Freedom Movement. You just made a donation recently and to some people at the Independence Square following the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, ben, if that video is ready, if we could quickly played for people to see but what what is what is the reasoning or the the, the rationale behind that movement the freedom movement what do you do well, what freedom, are your objectives the freedom movement has always been here since um we started the new africa foundation in 2014 2015 so uh the freedom movement was one of the initiatives mm -hmm. from the new africa foundation the new africa foundation has been feeding ten thousands of kids in africa and we never spoke about it we just kept doing it supporting single mothers and stuff so we already have like a, a great experience with the crowd with the people with africans you know we know uh, we know their struggles we know their problems and we know how to sometimes you know also assist them and, and help them so that's how the freedom movement kicked off and with this donation, um, I just thought that, you know, when there was going to be a lockdown, I was also thinking about the people who didn't have homes and food and other things. Uh, I know everybody was, a lot of people were probably thinking about those people who were mm -hmm. affected and yeah. um, stuff like that. But I was thinking about these people because I thought, you know, without them having food and, you know, words of encouragement to be able to, you know, really lock yourself down and stay away from this, they will still be out there and they will probably end up spreading it more than those that are already affected. So I thought it was uh, the right angle uh, to, to sort of, you know, start that challenge and let people also come in and help. Okay. Is this your first project, the Freedom Movement? No, like I said, the, the New Africa tell Foundation. Us, yes, I, tell us some of the things that you, you've been doing. Well, Freedom Movement, um, we do things all over the world. We've done things in even China and um, there's stuff in America. We help um, ski road drugs and, and, and people who were homeless on the street, which was one of America's biggest problems. And um, the uh, Freedom Nation helped to sort of, um, you know, build the, the tent community that solved the issue, the issue that they were spending billions on that they mm -hmm. couldn't resolve. Um, like I said, we feed 10,000 kids. We pick a country and uh, we feed them. Uh, we take care of... Um, How many countries have you done that I've in I've done so three far? countries. Ghana? Is Ghana uh, No, Ghana is no? not part of it yet. I've done Nigeria, I've done Mali, and I've done a place in Senegal. Hmm. Well done. Okay, so go on, you were saying... Yeah, so um, basically um, that's what uh, the, the freedom movement, but it's always been behind the New Africa Foundation. You know, the New Africa Foundation is the head of the freedom movement and uh, Freedom Nation, of course. There are other things that we're yet to do, uh, which i rather wait for them to come out. Okay. Now, because we're talking about this donation, let's talk about the COVID-19 as a pandemic. What do you make of it? And do you think that as a country we have managed and handled it well i think so um looking at our situation and our um resources you, you want yes to maybe i should use the word resources i think we are doing very well i think the president has been brilliant um the effort that he has put into control is absolutely phenomenal and i think Ghanaians have also handled it well um we should just pray that you know we come out of it smoothly i just also think it's a, a moment and a phase that we're going through in life. You know, it's just God's creation, God's ways. But, I mean, looking at how other countries are handling it, of course, we cannot compare ourselves to them. But do you think we can do better or we could have done better? Again, I mean, I don't think there is a thing that we're doing that we haven't done. <laughs> you know, I, I don't think that we're doing bad we're doing great as it is i feel like you know um ghana we're not rich you know we are not 
it's as developed as the Western countries. So uh, from looking at what we're doing, we're doing great. I mean, I, I couldn't say otherwise. I think we're doing very well. Uh, God forbid if there were millions or hundreds of thousands of people that gets affected with this disease, what are we going to do? And I know God would not let that happen to us. But I think that the way the country has sort of put measures and precautions in place from the beginning, I think we're doing absolutely great. Okay. Let's come back and talk about you. Uh, you've kept quite a name for yourself internationally. I mean, looking at what you've just been telling me now, the donations in Mali, Nigeria, and co. You haven't done bad at all, and you've been associated with, you know, in the company of Floyd Mayweather. I've seen videos of you two together. We were recently in international news for acquiring a multi-million dollar mansion in the U.S., right? How does it feel like to be talked about like that, recognized internationally, and be in the company of such people? Well, I, I thought that somebody had to do it, you know, because, you know, we, we are Africans, we're Ghanaians, and sometimes, you know, we're very restricted and limited uh, as in what we can do, you know. I, I feel like we should be able to walk into Hollywood, we should be able to walk onto the Wall Streets. and. How did you become friends with Mayweather? Um, well, <laughs> that's... Uh, that's a question that I don't know whether the answer is here, but you know, um, we became friends after um, after the fight, after the, his last fight. We became closer. We had met a few times, but came much closer and um, started doing things. How together. did that happen? You gave him some money. Oh no! I mean, uh, maybe is rich. I I'm not gonna have to give. But him you money to, you say that after the fight. So what brought you guys that close? Um, I think. Game recognized game, and real do too. And I'm sure Mayweather, it's like, for me, he's an Ashanti. You know, when I look at him, his roots is my roots. You know, he's probably flamboyant. He's confident. He's also humble. He knows where he's going. He knows what to do. And he's a champion. He's a winner. And I'm sure he saw the same thing in me. Where, hence, that's where the synergy kicked off. You know, that's... You know, that's the fact of it. I mean, that's what really it is. It's not about um, me supporting Mayweather or Mayweather supporting me. It's that, you know, synergy that, you know, I think we've both seen in each other. That's what it is. But it's also because I'm bold enough to be out there. You know, um, a lot of Ghanaians um, have refused to show their face. And, um, you know, we're used to being low-key, which is not a bad thing. But, you know, I'm not someone that can be easily tamed that way okay but you have also been associated with some women internationally we've had report of your alleged relationship with mary j blige naomi campbell are there any truth in these reports yeah they're my, they're my great friends you know i have, have um, you dated them um no i mean naomi campbell is a true sister like you know he's a beautiful soul um, we're close, so one might think otherwise. Mary J. Blige, I didn't know her too well, but I've always appreciated her music. And, you know, there was uh, a night that we just all went out together with Kate Moss, uh, Chanel, Versace, and all these great people, Spike Lee in the world. And, you know, we were just hanging out in the night. But the next day, you know, the media is just, you know, they just paint their own pictures. And, you know, that's what it is. I, I think they're all beautiful people. I have a wife and I have children. And um, I believe in building family. I believe in um, encouraging, enhancing, and empowering women. You know, I respect what uh, the part that women play as a role in this world. And sometimes people might just look at us and think that we are taking advantage of that situation. But unfortunately, I'm not one of those people. I'm very interested in, you know, turning my visions into reality, living my dreams, and making sure that I impact society, generations, nations, continents, countries, and, you know, be known worldwide. Okay. So in a bit, I'll be going live to social media to take some of the questions that you have for uh, Freedom Jacob Caesar. I'll, I'll call you that henceforth. Uh, I'm sure he'll, he'll try and answer every one of those questions. But beyond your international exposure, you seem to have this Afrocentric look all the time. How are you so bound to Africa that it even shows in the way you carry yourself? Because I, I, every photo of yours that I've seen, I spot something African there, beyond all the Gucci's, the Louis Vuitton's that you've been wearing. Well, first of all, you know, I believe in our attire that we wear. It's our uniform. You know, that actually portrays our character. 
Our character is our image. Image is a perception, and perception is life. Mm -hmm. And that's how people are going to perceive you. So if you're wearing things for the sake of it, or you just want to wear it because you've seen it in the fashion news, then it's more or less like, you know, you've just been clothed. But, you know, sometimes I, I want my my dress sense to send a message to nations, to the audience, to the people. And I feel like, you know, Africa is my culture. I should find different ways of incorporating Africa into my daily lifestyle. And, you know, I believe this is a way of motivating people to believe in yourself. It, it's, it's not just about what you wear, really, but you seem to talk a lot about Africa, bringing Africa together, because you say that Jacob stands for nations coming together. Yeah, Unity. I mean, yeah. So when when I came up with this character, of course I, you know, uh, I crowned myself as the Prince of Africa, you know. And yes, people, there's that as well. <laughs> people like, you know, they look at this guy and they're like, "What is this? Is it a Marvel or what is what is the story?" Like, you know. And I sometimes I just, you know, I kind of laugh in my head because um, a Prince of Africa is Freedom Jacob Caesar. The question is, who had the voice? Nobody stood up. Everybody stood up to who? They and stood to up what? to the world and spoke for their people, spoke who? for their country. What, what have you done? Well, this is what I'm doing. It's not about what I've done. It's not about who you are. It's about who you're about to become. Where I'm going is to be able to put my continent on the map, to be able to put my country, my nation, my people, my race, my culture. I believe in these things. That's my belief. And there's, I don't see any crime in that. I don't see anything wrong with that. What I see that people might have issues with is all these titles that I'm claiming, you know, uh, who's Freedom Jacob Caesar and who mm -hmm. is the Prince of Africa and all this. But, you know, basically what I'm just saying about being a Prince of Africa is just telling the people that I'm the one with the voice, so I wear the crown. So that's all it is, you know. It's so just it's my... self self imposed. Absolutely. And And you don't think there are people in other African countries who have done the things that you're doing? Well, they could have done a hundred times, a million times more, but if they didn't claim it or call you're yourself claiming that, it. then the, yeah, I, I yeah. like that attitude. Okay. It, it, tell us about your family. You have a wife, how many kids? I love my, my family, I love my wife, beautiful family. I have four kids, you know, they're all boys. Is your uh, wife as flamboyant and popular? No, as my you? wife is very, very calm, very reserved. And, you know, they say the opposite attracts, and I needed something like that, you know. Um, so, you know, we've been together for a good 18 years. Um, mm. Yeah, so I moved back from England, 2001. She was the woman I met, and the first woman I met will be the last woman I leave, or she will leave me. I, I respect that. I feel like, you know, love is a bond, and um, people should not mistake it for other things. And so I've created family out of it. I believe in my family. I believe in my people as well. Mm. How, how is a day at home like for you? Um, I get to spend a little time at home. You know, I have a lot of work, I, a lot of things going. And so my days are structured very differently. I wake up in the morning, I go to the gym, I run four or five miles and then get to work. And I have to deal with four or five different companies under one group, you know, just to make sure there's structures and all these things are in place. And then I have to also manage relationships, which is very important. That keeps me going. And then by the time I get back home, you know, it's around six, seven, uh, you know, get some dinner, spend some time with my kids and, you know, with wife and uh, maybe watch series and read a bit and then sleep. Then it's that same thing over and over until, you know. Right. Let's, let's still talk about your family. You're not the only business magnate in your family. We know about your brother as well, Kwiku, who yeah. is also a very ac an accomplished yeah. businessman. How did your family become so business focused? I think my father was a great businessman. I didn't grow up with my Who's father. Who's your father? My father is SKB Diakon, the late SKB Diakon. Okay. I think he was a great businessman. Um, he owned a part of Tata Brewway, um, and um, he was also into oil and commodities. So he was a great businessman, you know, came from far, but, you know, you know, kind of established himself very well. So maybe that's the spirit that stays behind us. But, you know, for me, my thing is not just about business. You know, it's a, it's a compilation of different things, you know, movement, business, invention you know a whole lot that i want to do you know in life so sometimes as much as people think the money is so important for me it comes last mm, i see beyond business and philanthropist work do you have plans of going into politics leadership but i get a lot of these questions i mean um it's not something that has crossed my mind even though a lot of people say it you know um if I will ever do anything, 
I'll do it with a full passion, else I will not do it at all. You know, and I, I believe that most of these things can be a call. I never thought that I would grow up to build industrial parks and, you know, these buildings and become a mogul and all these things. But as, as and when it comes, we, we stand up to it. We grab it and make the best out of it, you know. So you're considering it. If it comes, uh, you take it. Um, it's not something that I really think of. I, I think politics is really some kind of hard work. You know, it's not easy for an African, African politician, you know. But, the, they, mm -hmm. okay, you go on. They inherit issues they inherit problems you know they inherit economical problems and you know social development that sometimes you know the budget all the revenues that is coming out of the state property is not enough for them and the support that is coming from the west end so even though i feel like it needs a bit of a change you know a boost or something i also think that they go through a lot you know it's just, it's just, uh, it's a hard work it's not something that but, i would just sit there but and think being this. A, a, a freedom jacob caesar you have taken up the mantle of being the Prince of Africa. You don't think that if you get into politics, you'll be able to voice out the concerns of the youth more? You'll have a bigger platform. You don't think so? Um, I could. Hence, there are also other ways to do that. You but know? if you're called by any government to say, will you? Um, I wouldn't probably wait for the government to call me. If I had to do it, I would do it. But, you know, I'm not, I'm a servant to God. I'm not someone that believes in um, things that way. But like I said, if it's a call, we stand up to it. But it's not something that I've made my mind up that, okay, I want to become a politician or I want to become an MP or a president. You know, it's a, it's, it's a good position. It's, it's, you know, it's big, but it's also not something that, you know, I look up to being. What do you think about this government? I think they are the best promoters. promoters I think of... that we should look at the qualities in people more so than finding also the wrong things with them. But I think when you look at all the presidents and, and, and the governments that have come in the past, you should look at what they did very well. And I think this government has promoted Ghana very well. You know, um, we are becoming global. We're known all over the world. Um, people are beginning to, apart from this pandemic issue that has probably stopped people from traveling, but people were very curious in coming into Ghana and, you know, have heard about events going on in Ghana and other things happening. So I think that's what you're very good at. And um, uh, we should, you know, we should take advantage of that being um, globalized. Would you support a second term of this government? Um, I support a country to have a government regardless, you know, and I'm not someone that is too, too much into politics, you know. But you I, vote. I did vote the last time. Would you yes, vote I, it's not something that I would like to sort of say it here, but, you know, um, I believe that. Can you keep a secret? Of course. So can I, but you can't keep a secret because you said, of course. And if I did tell you my <laughs> secrets, that means it's no more a secret. So I'm right. sorry. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It makes a lot of sense. But, you know, for the many people who want to be like, or who want to be the next Jacob, Freedom Jacob Caesar, what do you tell them? You, I'm sure you know that there are so many people who look up to you. Um, thank you. I'm sure you know that. Thank you. Yeah. It's, uh, uh, well... You get a lot of these messages, mentor um, me and stuff. Yes, but uh, also I don't turn around to look at a lot of things that maybe people are thinking of me or looking at because I haven't paid that much mind to, um, to critics and stuff like that. But um, I definitely I want to become an example for the youth to be able to do more than I do. So, yes, I also I look up to them. But what, what would you tell them? How, to, how, how can they get to be the next Nana Kwame Bidiako? Okay, so first of all, I think they should be themselves. And they should be humble, because that's the beginning of fearing the Lord. They should always ask for wisdom when they mm. pray, knowledge, and understanding. These three things are key. They should be upfront to know where they are going and mm -hmm. they should be straight with life because you can't cheat nature. You know, sometimes 
we say Can to you explain our, that? Well, explain we say to ourselves mind. that, you know, we mm -hmm. want to be doctor. But we're sitting in a place drinking beer and eating kebab at the time where we're supposed to be doing research about doctors and scientific -cool stuff. You know, you need to put in a lot into what you want to do to become what you want to become. And that total concentration is what a lot of people need. And I feel like it's my advice for them to be focused and um, look straight into what they want to do and make sure that they achieve that. Is it as easy as you say it? It's not. But, you know, like I said, total concentration is always the perfect method in everything we do. It will take you there. If you want to be a musician and you have total concentration, with time, you would become a musician. Uh, mm. But sometimes also you need to respect the time factor that, you know, if you want to be a footballer at the age of 18 and you're 27 today, maybe you can forget about being a footballer and start thinking of being a coach. It's still within the same realms, but the time has gone for you to become a footballer. Did you struggle in life at all? A lot. Really? And I still do struggle. And people don't understand struggles from our level. They think struggle is just you not having something to eat or not having money. No. When you are in a world where 80 people out of 100 people will betray you, you know, the people that you trust the most sometimes will turn their back on you. You know, um, the things that you have invested so much into, it's being destroyed. It's falling apart because people don't want to fix it. Mm -hmm. These struggles are, it gives us sleepless nights, you know. So there are different types of struggles, and I've been through a lot of them. Are you looking at mentoring a group of young people who want to be like you? Absolutely. I mean, they should start um, coming on my podcast soon. Um, Is it out yet? Yes, we are still building on a series. I mean, uh, episodes. So the first series is 10 episodes, you know, and it's, it, you know, it starts telling people about money, about women, about uh, love, about God, religion, you know, everything. So that's the sort of mentoring that I want to do. And it's worldwide. Mm, have you started? Has yeah. it, so you have some people you're mentoring. Um, oh, they're just people logged on to your it's all being, No, it's all being built. I mean, you know, I have a management team um, up from all over the world. So, you know, I like to do things, you know, on, on a professional. Structured. Yeah, professional. But for those who are interested in being mentored by you, how yes. do they go about it? Yes, yes, they would soon be able to access the podcast very soon. Um, I would also be doing a live debate on my Instagram page. I just came on there five months ago. I have never been there, you know, um, so... Um, my management team, of course, realized that, you know, the Freedom Channel is coming out for the Freedom Nation. And they thought, you know, maybe... What's a Freedom Channel, a TV station? Uh, yeah, it's it's a brought-to-you station, not a TV station. It's a brought-to-you station. So it's something like that. that like a like, YouTube channel, sort of. Yes, but something in between YouTube and TV, you know, that is brought to you. So, uh, and it's a fast-forward, rewind TV kind of thing that you can, you know, go back into it and and um, go back into chapters and stuff like that. Yeah. So the people who are interested in being mentored by you should look out for... For the podcast. And also very soon, I would be probably going around, you know, touring and stuff like that. Um, one of the things that uh, I think the Freedom Movement is about to do, you know, after this uh, 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 corona issue is that, you know, we will be touring around, you know, African countries, especially Ghana, and um, encouraging all the schools you know, that, you know, they should be able to believe in a new life, the new world, and mm. life still goes on, you okay. know, and giving some books and stuff away. Okay. So you and a few other people in this country have done very well for yourself in different aspects. Do you think there's an opportunity for wealth creation in this country? Absolutely. I mean, you I think so? I created my phenomenal wealth from here. I mean, and this is why I believe so much in Africa, so much in Ghana. You know, it's the things that we have the chance to do over here, we can't do it in other people's country. You know, we need to respect that. We build the best in our own country. You know, you become the best in your own country, even though a prophet is not recognized in their own town, but this is where you can become a prophet. Do you think you've been recognized well enough? Um, I think... People, a lot of people don't know my efforts of building communities, uh, building industrial platforms, building the nation. You know, that's what I do, you know, but people don't see that side of me. They're probably going to just say, oh, cheddar or freedom is a flamboyant something, something, something or whatnot. But, you know, if they really take the time, they would see the real work that I do.
It's not to do with my looks. And so I feel like a man should not be judged by their looks, but rather they should be judged by their character. Mm. I see. Looking at this country and all the many other places that you have been to, are you satisfied with the level of development we, we, we are seeing here? Uh, we can do better, but we will need um, industrial platforms, manufacturing hubs. We will need these things to increase uh, our production uh, numbers uh, to also stop importation and subsidize the economy or balance the economy with exportation as well. We need to be able to export production from here. We need to build more cities and create more employment, but it's all going to be based on industrialization, um, technology, hubs like Silicon Valleys, and we need to also increase the strength in our energy sector, you know. So, and these are things that we're already working on, you know, from the Petronia movement. Um, we believe in becoming the biggest industrial hub in West Africa, and, and it should start from Ghana. We believe that Ghana is the place where you know, everybody in West Africa and Africa would feel so comfortable with. One thing I like about Ghana is that we have a great political stability, uh, economical stability. We're more welcoming. People can just move in here. You can live in here. There's not a lot of bad things to associate Ghana with. So it's the right place to create all these sort of platforms. What is the worst thing you've heard about yourself? The worst rumor? I never paid no mind to them. You know, I feel like... Um, I'm the topic and they're the gossip. So they just got to do what they do, you know, and I have to do what I do. But I never do pay mind, any mind to these things. But you hear them? Um, sometimes people tell me, but honestly, you know. And I of the things that you've heard, which, which one have you thought, this is so weird? Look, Ghanaians can be weird. We shouldn't even be worried about that. Like, I've never been worried about the things that my people do wrong. I've been worried about how can I help these people. You know, that's how I feel for them. I don't feel like, you know, just because they said this about me, so I don't like them. That's they're all I have. I'm a Ghanaian, I'm an African, and if my people are not good to me and I'm not going to be good to them, then what good are we going to portray? So just so all the people who are looking at me now and hearing me now can also understand the sort of person that I am, that, yes, I've heard you, but you don't trouble me. Yes, I don't take what you say to hate you. No, I just feel like you need help. I feel like, you know, I should find a way for, if not you, your child not to repeat your mistakes because we cannot hate each other when we live with each other. You know, we cannot just disregard each other when we need each other. And I think that, you know, uh, as a country, that is one thing that we should all come together and start to feel about ourselves. We shouldn't just be looking at people and judging them and talking about them and gossiping about them. We should start to embrace them. We should, we should start to encourage them. We should start to uplift them for what they do. It doesn't matter even if they can weave just a basket. You know, it's, that's the best they can do. And I feel like we need that support as a nation and okay. as a country. Okay, um, I'm trying to get some questions uh, for you on uh, Facebook, so you answer them quickly before we leave. Okay, um, someone says, Imateta says, please, the youth is ready to vote for you if you'd like to be president. <laughs> God bless you, Mr. President, already. <laughs> no? You're not ready for that? Look. I would, you know, you want to know my, 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 <laughs> my real dream? I want to be an emperor. I want to become something that, you know, we've been lacking for a long time. You know, I want to go back to our four forefathers' positions, you know, where we used to sit and have a ruler's instinct and to be able to shape things the way we need to shape it and not by letting people from other countries or other parts of the world telling us what to do. But, you know, it's also not easy to mm -hmm. become that. And wherever it's going to start from, it's okay. But definitely, uh, I believe in leadership. I definitely believe in leadership. Okay. Um, Peter Paul says, Freedom, what's your plan for young entrepreneurs in Ghana? Well, I think that, first of all, if we can start to 
do some mentoring um, classes for some of these people? How do we gather them? You know, uh, how serious, how do we find a, a team, a management team or, or some kind of promoters that can put some of these people together? And I'm more than happy to volunteer to share my success story with them. Okay. Um, Nijek says, when all is said and done, what do you want to be remembered for? I think you've said it. You want to be known as an emperor. You want to... Uh, that is just being known. For me, I don't think legacy is about the names that we build for ourselves or the homes and the clothes that we wear. I think legacy is about the investment that we put in people. So when I'm not here, I just don't want to be remembered. But I want my absent to be felt. Mm. Okay. Um, Prince P says, I have an advice for you. Please don't go into politics. You can do whatever you want without entering into politics. Okay. Um, Thank you, Prince. Someone says you should speak tree. Can you speak tree? I spoke tree. I was just on UTV and I speak tree very well. It's my dialect. I speak it. And so, so what to say? Okay. So for those of you who want to hear him speak tree, he's spoken tree. Um, I want to get some more questions. Hold on a second for me. Um, okay. Uh, there are so many people actually saying they look up to you and they really love you. I'm just trying to f pick the the questions from them. Okay, so Thomas says that, what are you doing for the unemployed in this country? Well, you know, um, I've already, I already employ over 200 and something people, as it is. I want to increase it into thousands by building industrial platforms. So my industrial platforms can actually bring more than 10,000, you know, employment spaces in the country. And I want to keep growing it. I want to, I believe in industrialization. I feel like um, it's, it's the best platform to create jobs. So it's one of the things that I'm doing. Okay. Um... Kubari says, will you ever visit the North? Because a lot of people there um, need your inspiration and support. I have visited the North. I've driven from Accra to to Kumasi, to Brunhap, to, to Tamale, to Wagadugu, to Baga, to um, the last border that is between um, uh, Baga and um, Burkina Faso. So I, I've visited there. I'd like to visit, visit there again at some point. You know, um, yes. Okay. More questions. Okay, I'm, I'm Martha Aqua says, I'm a single mother, and all I want from Nana Kwame Bidiako is to bless my son to become a great person just to prove the cornerstone will become the builder stone. Will you? Well, tell her that my blessings are in words. I wish her well, but she should also remember one thing, that her seed is the only thing that can germinate again. So she should put her hopes in her child, encourage him, Raise him well with God fearing, and definitely she will benefit okay. from his blessing. Okay. Um, Godwin says he needs scholarship. Can you help? Do you offer scholarships? We do help a lot of people with scholarship sometimes. How can so, they go about it? Um, I think um, they can send uh, either on Freedom Jacob Caesar movement. Um, I do choose the people that I do that for. It's not like a, th there's not a platform that I haven't arranged a platform like that yet. For scholarship but i have helped other people with maybe that. you want to look into that um, creating uh, uh, some kind of platform maybe yeah it sounds interesting okay yeah. how do i join the freedom movement that's a question from someone um yeah very long name but how do i join tell the freedom them just movement? to clench their fist and scream freedom that's and it. follow the movement <laughs> <laughs> yes, basically, um, you know, uh, our movement is not like the Black Panthers where you have to register and now you're like, okay, I'm part of freedom. You know, it's um, just contributing to society, the things that we do. So, for instance, when I'm ready to go out there, I have a lot of volunteers coming and saying, okay, I want to do this. This one says I want to do this and I want to do this. I want to share. I want to help do this. And so that's what the movement is about. And so for now, they can just follow uh, me on Instagram and find out about the things that we're doing and as time goes on if it's something that they have to register themselves or anything I think it would um, come to that time okay uh, Makousa says now tell me freedom what will make an African young man be successful in a system that does not reward hard work well the system doesn't reward hard work 
Yes, that's, I think they should, uh, they, his name is Maxwell? Yes. Yeah, so I think Max, Mark, Mark, Mark yes. Sorry. Mark, you should understand that, you know, sometimes the opposite attracts and whatever you resist, you persist. So the fact that things doesn't work in our system, that should actually motivate and strengthen them to, you know, kind of cross that river by making sure that whatever that they're doing uh, becomes uh, recognized and acknowledged. Okay. Um, when are you bringing Mayweather to Ghana? That's a question so many people. Uh, Floyd was coming to Ghana for the opening of number one, um, one of my buildings, number one, was for street. And, um, you know, because he's my friend, I didn't want him to come here like it's some kind of appearance, you know. Um, so I, I decided to bring him in a April to open that. But unfortunately, this pandemic issue has, you know, has changed every plan. And um, he just lost his children's mother and his uncle. So... May your soul rest in peace, Floyd. Um, and so, I don't know, we will rearrange it again. Okay. Uh, Evan says, can you reduce the prices of your estate so that the ordinary Ghanaian can afford it? It's not about reducing the price. It's about building ones that will be suitable for them or will be affordable enough for them. And we are planning to do so. Okay. How much is the building at Usu? Is it for sale? It's not for sale. It's... Um, <laughs> It's a building. I mean, it's, and I mean, are, are they, it's it's an apartment, no? The apartment. Uh, okay. okay, so let me just explain my this business to you properly, so you you guys can understand. Uh, the building in Osu, Kuala's, in Cantonments, in Airport, Belgravia, it's just basically we establishing a lifestyle that brings you a home. So our concept is like an Uber home. You call us five minutes, you have a home with a living room, a bedroom, a kitchen, a balcony, okay. and that's what it is. So in five years, these companies and these buildings will become like Uber homes, you know, and we're in between the hotel and uh, Airbnb, which is just a new niche that I've created in the industry. Okay. Um, Niyama says to ask you, will you prefer to contribute to the COVID-19 fund set up by the president or you prefer to give directly to a hospital? Look, I don't mind. I feel like, you know, every contribution, as long as it's from the heart, is good. You know, it's whether it goes to the president, uh, the, the um, government, or the hospital, or the public. You know, it's as long as it's from the heart. It's... Okay. Yeah, Sam says, what are the most important skills or characteristics needed for one to be your business partner? Sorry, say that again? What are the most important skills or characteristics needed for one to be your business partner? Oh, they have to have experience, one. They have to be very bold, you know, to stand by their decisions. And they have to be skillful. And the last one, they need to learn how to build a network. Mm. Okay. How did your educational background influence your success? That's from Seth Amokoy. Um, it uh, actually... It's, it's because I worked out of... Tell, like tell, this, yes. Yeah. So, so tell us about your educational background. I, I, I went to school a bit in Ghana. I finished my GCSE. Which school? I went to Accra Academy. Then I went to Apam. I, I started from Tema. Then I went to Accra Academy for a little bit. Oh, then. so you went to school with Bula. Yeah, Bula okay. is my guy, you know. And um, I went to Apam. Then after, I started uh, uh, my education in England, Waltham Forest a College. Then I went to Westminster University, which I I dropped out, you know, because I had business already that was generating me revenue. I, I was already a businessman. It, you know, and, and, and for me, what impacted my success is not the education that I was having. It's the fact that I walked out of university, so I looked at myself as I had myself to blame if I don't become successful, and it's one of the things that has, you know, motivated me since. Okay. Um, Ketsa Elom says, please ask Freedom if he's met the president yet. I don't know what over, but have you? I'm yes, sure. yes, 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 yes. No, no, it's, 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 I've met him more than just once. Um, what do you guys talk about? Oh, I think he's just um, a simple president. There's not much to talk about. Um, you know, he's always, um, uh, he's always sort of encouraged me with what I'm doing. And uh, I believe that he's also doing great stuff. Okay. Okay, let me take two more questions and then we can wrap up because we got extra time for you but um okay i won't ask this one did your travel abroad influence your success i think so i think traveling is key in our lives um we all need to travel even if we can't afford to travel to go to the west End, we still need to travel around our countries to learn about different cultures to learn about different people and different lifestyle it definitely did 
Okay, uh, your classmate here, Tyron Caesar says he was your senior actually at APAM. You're very generous. How generous are you? I have no measures for it. <laughs> but you're that generous, huh? Because I see a lot of um, comments here. Georgie Gali says, I have a land, a land at Spintex to sell to you. How can I meet you? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, are I, you interested? I don't remember the last time I met someone trying to buy a land, but I do have a team that look at me. Look okay, at so how does he get in touch with your team? Um, I think they can send stuff either on um, Wonder World you know, website and there is um, inquiry stuff and they, they take care of it. Okay, all right. There's another question. Would you want to be president in Ghana one day? I think he's, he said that. But what is the next big thing for you before, we, before I let you go? What should we expect from you? The biggest thing to blow our minds. I don't know. Just, you don't know? I'm sure you're working on something. I don't know. It's just, um, like I said, I don't tell the dreams. I leave the dreams. Mm. Okay. All right. We have to go now. But thank you very much for coming on thank the show. You. I hope you had a great time. But Nana Kwame Bediaku, also known as Cheddar Cheese. A.K.A. Freedom Jacob Caesar. And the Prince of Africa. Amen to that. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming on the Thank show. You. We're we're grateful and Thank continue you. to do what you're doing. Thank I am Sewa Mia. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you again on Monday. But join the news team at 11.30 for midday. On behalf of the entire production team, thanks for your company. Thanks for the messages. Unfortunately, I couldn't read all of them. But I'll try to have him answer some of them. And I don't know how I'm going to get the answers to you. Maybe. Okay.